Okay, on to the next Skip the Line reaction, man. And another one by Alter Bridge. This one is called Show Me a Sign. Um, I told you, man, there were plenty coming. I think this is like the second last one. Second last one. For those of you who want other ones, like the other ones are coming shortly. Um, something other than Alter Bridge at the end of the day. Look, I've been enjoying the Alter Bridge uh, reactions, to be honest. Um, but yeah, there will be one more coming after this. And then we're pretty much done with those requests. Um, this is a skip line request from Sammy. Once again, I really appreciate that. This is probably, this is just your message. This is probably uh, Alter Bridge's darkest song lyrically. Love to hear your thoughts. This album, Alter Bridge, or AB3, I think that it is, is general, was a loose concept, all about um, someone going through the dark times. Okay, I actually, I, I, I seem to have picked up on that on a lot of their songs as well. Um, but let's see what we got on this one. Let's go. this song because it's a uh, literally speaking of despair right specifically in that line there's like why i'm all the why are all the lines that i believe so it almost like he feels like he's been deceived right he's been deceived on it by himself of what the people around him and it's like it's almost like the tragedy of the world and the fakery of the world and all of that is just dawning on him now and he's like woken up to it like all of a sudden and you do get that in your life where you just like you click out of that and you realize wait a second none of these people had my interests none of these people give a shit about me do you know what I mean? They all have their own interests. And take a look at the mirror. What are you fucking doing? Do you know what I mean? So you start actually, when that starts dawning on you, it feels like an anvil of weight. But what's great about that is that it's also um, very sort of liberating because then you, you you know you'll have a mechanic from there on or from there on out, but you'll have a mechanic on how to you deal with your life better to see the bullshit around you. Actually, actually seeing the world for what it is, it's actually quite difficult you know what i mean it's quite difficult because you know you've got all these things that are pushed and you've got all all these different um people that try and push their uh, narratives and you see the world through a lot a lot of the times you see the world through someone else's eyes and only later on in life do you when you know do you open your eyes after having suffered a lot of pain endured a lot of shit and gone through it all does a consciousness come to be like wait a second do you know what i mean like I can take control of this for myself and I'm going to have to sacrifice a lot in order for me to get my life back into track, man. I'm going to have to sacrifice relationships. I'm going to have to sever ties. I'm going to have to do things that are going to benefit me and me alone um, because nobody else had your interests at heart. You know what I mean? And it's just, unfortunately, that's just the truth of the world. Nobody else has your interests at heart. Eternal life will not be 
I like what he said there. Eternal life will not be mine tonight. When you actually think of eternal life, eternal life is like after you die, there will be eternal life, right? And then afterwards, saying the fact that he's saying eternal life will not be mine tonight means that he's taken the decision to not go to the eternal life, like to stay in the into the in the physical life right now, right? I'm not entirely sure if that's. Uh, if that's uh, what he's saying, I don't, I don't know if he's saying that as a good thing or a bad thing, right? Or as if like maybe he's just, you know, he, he he feels like he should go to the eternal life, but he just doesn't have the courage to do it or whatever else. Thank God he doesn't. All right. So it's still, it's it's very hard. Like it's a very hard thing to listen to, but also a good thing to hear that, you know what I mean? That you don't want to go into the eternal life too soon. Let's go. First not forgotten. Eternal life will not be mine tonight But if I wake to find perdition This I know that falls is mine That is how you get on in life That is how you fix shit in life Is just stop pointing fingers and you say the fault is mine Whatever it is the moment you start taking accountability for your own life, that is where things start to look up. The moment you say, this all the shit that's going on around me, right? Regardless of who's done what, or regardless of how I feel, none, it's nobody else's fault. It's my fault. I let that happen to myself, right? And I'm going to take control of that. Until you do that, until you take accountability for your own actions, until you take agency for your own life, you're never going to you're, you're, you're gonna get out of that rut, ever. So that's a great line to win. I know you said that this was a dark song, but I actually am not looking at this as a dark song at all. I'm actually looking at this as a very positive song. Because a lot of what he says, it might feel dark, but he's looking for hope, right? And also he's taking accountability for certain things where it's like, it's, this is mine. That's, that's an awakening at the end of the day. So I think it's, it's less dark. I think it's actually more positive personally than my personal opinion. Over here is the most important statement. This is the statement of the entire song. This is basically the premise of the entire song. That's why I say it's a very hopeful track as, a, as opposed to a very dark track, right? Where he literally said, a trail of, a trail of tears beyond, my redeem beyond redemption, just a word and nothing more, right? But over here is I must reveal I am falling to the darkness. I now am born. Right. So what he's basically saying is I must admit that I am falling to the dark. A lot of people struggle with that. They struggle to let go of that. They struggle to actually accept 
because of ego and because of pride and all of that kind of thing, they struggle to accept that what they are doing is what's putting them in this position, right? And the made, if you sit there and stay in denial and think that you're always right and you get stuck to your rightness, it's just, just never, it's never going to work. So this over here, I must reveal I am falling to the dark. So that's actually accepting. It's an acceptance, right? It's no longer being in denial. It's an awakening. It's like, okay, I need to actually reveal. I need to show that I'm actually, I am falling to the dark. I am human. I can't handle this uh, um, um, all on my own because it's just gotten too much, right? And instead of trying to sit there and be in denial of it and try to control it and everything while everything's collapsing and things like that, you know what? Actually, let me just put it out there. Let me put it out there into the universe and realize, yes, I am falling to the dark, right? I'm falling to the dark. All the puzzle pieces are on the floor, right? Everything, all the puzzle pieces of my life, I try to hold on to everything and everything's collapsed, right? But once you acknowledge that everything's collapsed, now you can pick it up. Now you are born. Now you can pick up it piece by piece, you can pick it up. It's like, I'll fix this. I'll fix that. I'll fix that. Then you can't go further. You can't go lower than the ground. All your pieces are on the ground, right? You can't go lower than the ground. Now it's just time to dig yourself out of that hole. It's time to pick up all the pieces. And that's a very positive, very powerful thing. And that's when you are born. You are born when you actually realize that you do have shortcomings, you do have miscomings, you don't have to stuck, be stuck to your rightness, you don't have to be stuck to your pride and your ego, you can let that all go, let everything that is going to collapse either way, collapse and then pick it up piece by piece, I like that, let's go. There's that electric guitar. I'll take it back. I know, don't pause in between a guitar solo, but I'll take it back and we'll listen to it straight through. Um, but there's that electric guitar with that hope again, right at the end of the track. I've mentioned this a few times. You know what I mean? Bringing breathing life, bring, breathing hope into this whole track with that electric guitar power. I really like that track. I actually felt that track was more hopeful than it was dark. Uh, it just obviously depends on what you know, sort of what sort of angle you look at it from, um, and what perspective you look at it from. That's what's great about this kind of music is that you can look at it from all different types of perspective with how it relates to you. Um, but I found it this track more hopeful than it being dark. I actually really like that. I like the Alter Bridge tracks that are more melodic. Their lyrics are always good. Right, but when they don't drag out that instrumentation, it's almost like they get to the point. They give you a little bit of that uh, um, um, instrumentation um, without the, the lyrics, essentially, and then afterwards, um, you know, they they they, they it's, it's, it's it's like really well rounded and concise. Where the ones where it's like the instrumentation is dragged out for 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 quite a while tends to start making the song feel monotonous to me. So this one wasn't like that. This is kind of like the, 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 the recipe that I like, to be honest, from Alta Bridge. So you guys let me know what you think down below. I really like this song. All right? I really, really did. So you guys let me know what you think down below. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.